Hi everybody. Welcome back to Jenkins Boat Works. I am Chuck Jenkins. In this video, we're going to continue working on our Freedom 17 Cedar Strip Canoe. Uh, my latest efforts include caning the seats. I'm super happy with the way this has turned out and uh, I wasn't going to do a long video about caning because there's some other video out there that you can look at that uh, does a pretty good job of explaining it, but with all the effort that I put into it, I learned a lot and I feel like we've got something we can share. So uh, we're glad you're here. And uh, I wanted to talk about the, the just the process of doing the caning for a few minutes. Um, I got my thwart done. This will go in the middle of the canoe. Super happy with that. Um, when I started doing the, the caning, I started with the regular organic rattan cane. I had a lot of troubles with it, which you will see in the video. I shifted gears and went with some plastic cane instead. And for several reasons, I think this is probably a better choice. I, uh, Think it'll hold up better to outdoor conditions and uh, quite honestly it was easier to use so uh, didn't have to soak it like you do regular cane um, anyway just pretty pleased with with how it came out i would like to make mention of another fella that's on youtube his channel's called a guy doing stuff he has an excellent video on caning his canoe seats and I got a lot out of it. I probably watched it a dozen times. So uh, I would encourage you to look at that if this is something that you are thinking that you wanna do. Uh, between his video and this video, uh, even if you've never done it before, I think you can probably gain enough um, knowledge and insight to take a stab at it yourself. And it's, it's pretty, it takes a long time, but it's really very rewarding. Uh, I enjoyed it. So, uh, I will mention I got this plastic cane from H.H. Perkins Company out of Connecticut, ordered it online, and uh, I'll put a link in the description uh, for not only this, but also for, for Adam's video where he does his seeds. So uh, anyway, we're glad you're here. Let's jump in and see what kind of progress we're going to make. We're just about done with this canoe. So I got some caning material and started to learn how to do this. Um, I'm pretty frustrated with this because I can't do it all in one setting. And once the cane starts to dry out, um, it becomes pretty brittle. And this kind of troubled me anyway, because if this is subject to, you know, outdoor use and water and that sort of thing. I'm just afraid it's not going to hold up. Um, you can see like down here, see where that piece just broke off. You can see another part up, up in here where the cane broke in two. Um, it's the same one uh, here. And so I've ordered some this is two and a half millimeter. I've ordered some two and a half millimeter plastic cane. So we're gonna chalk this up to learning experience. It is kind of tricky to do, but it's cool. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm getting... I had said that I wasn't gonna do much more video on um, caning the seats for the canoe, but um, I started off with regular uh, uh, cane, plant-based material, and you have to soak it, and it just, it gets very brittle, and I started worrying about how it would hold up in an outdoor environment, and if it got wet and dry, wet and dry multiple times, and that sort of thing, and uh, so anyway, I found this plastic cane and it's the same size it's two and a half millimeter 
and it is so much easier to use. You don't have to soak it. It doesn't get brittle. You can tie it on the bottom. Uh, it is just actually a pleasure to use. I don't regret the fact that I did one seat with the, with the real cane first because I learned a lot. And uh, so, but then whatever I had done previously, I ripped it all out and did, um, well, the other seats, the other seats in the, it's not in the canoe. Let's go look in. So yeah, I got this one done. Um, and this is with this plastic cane material. And I think it came out pretty good. I really like it. So that's the front one. And I still have to cut off these edges to get it to fit in there. But anyway, that's, that's where right, we're, we're going to go. We're going to go this way to start, which I will call vertical. This way will be horizontal. So we're going to do one layer this way, all the way through. And then, then we'll go horizontal on top of that. Then we'll come back and do another layer on top of that vertically. And then the fourth layer coming back horizontal, we have to, hello, <laughs> we have to weave it. So anyway, like I said, for a detailed description on how to do it, look for, look for a guy doing stuff. We'll show some shots of this as we kind of proceed. I do like to just run my finger up this to try to keep it oriented, the facing oriented the right way. And then when I put it down in the next hole, just kind of hang on to it at the same thing, let it run through my finger. And then when I pull it down, then it's not twisted. Um, this was extremely important with the other cane, the, the, you know, the regular cane. And if you got that twisted, um, sometimes there was just no getting it straightened out. You just have to rip the whole thing out. Uh, this is much easier if you do get it twisted to be able to like work it and, and maneuver it to where you can get it to uh, straighten out. So anyway, so now we're there, done there. Now we'll come over here and, and do this other side. Okay, last one on the vertical. Something else I want to show you now too is I've only got four of these pegs to hold this stuff in here and so obviously I'm going to need to use those when I get to the other side so I'm going to go ahead and tie some of this off now so here's how I do this I just take this run it up underneath here this one next to it make that nice and tight and then come back up under there and I'm basically just doing an overhand knot. And again, that's why this is so nice because I can pull on that as hard as I want. I didn't break it. And um, now I can pull that peg out of there. Now I'm going across my horizontals. I started down here just on the bottom edge instead of starting in the middle. Another advantage of using this synthetic cane. It comes in this big coil. I cut off as much as I want. I think I've got enough cut off to do this whole uh, part, this whole uh, horizontal part. So we'll see. I may get to the end and find out I need just enough to do one more lane, but. <laughs> and then I just, I do, I try to keep it oriented try not to let it grab onto the end of the wood wrap itself around there and when we get close I kind of pull it up just make sure it's going to lay flat and there we are okay so we've got a vertical and a horizontal layer on and I'm getting ready to do the third stage which is back to vertical and this just lays over the top. There's no weaving at this point, but I want to try to make it so that 
it comes in and is just off to the side of this one just a little bit because when we do the next one horizontally, we will have to go under the very first layer and over this one. So it's easier if they're not just directly on top of each other. You can do it, but... Okay, and now we've got that offset. I'm gonna peg that down. And we just come up through the one here next to it from the bottom up, just like we've been doing the whole time. Okay, so that's how it should look after the third layer. So our next, our next phase is going back horizontal. But on this one, we're going to weave under the very first one, over the last one, under the first one, over the last one. So it gets a little tedious and it's hard to, uh, you just gotta pay attention. So far it's been kind of mindless. We got one kind of loose one in here. Well, seems like somehow it's tightened up. Um, I'm not worried about it. It will tighten up as we are weaving other pieces in there. So. And I've got everything tied off so I can get rid of my pegs. All right. Okay, so now we're on the fourth layer. So this is another horizontal part. And it is now more important than it ever has been to be mindful of keeping it with oriented to where it's flat. So I just run it through my fingers like this. Just let it fall off down toward the floor or whatever. So under, under the first one and over your most recent one. And it's especially tricky on the edge here. It's oriented right and then just let it slip down in there. I really do believe this fourth layer is the hardest one to do. Um, but when you're coming now, I, I, so I came across this way, down through this hole, up through this hole where I've got it pegged. And then on this one, because we're going the other way, now it's over this one and under that one. So you can just kind of pop it through there. Now I don't want to get too far because I want to make sure I'm oriented right. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that. So I've gone through about four, uh, four strings here. Let's see, I kind of pull that up like that so I know, so it doesn't twist on me. And I'm coming off to the right side of this, it'll, it'll just kind of do it naturally. Now see, that got twisted right there. Oh my. Okay, so the whole thing's twisted. Now I'm gonna try to just turn that. You would never be able to do this with the uh, organic cane. Yeah, see, I straightened that out. I don't know if you could see that, but it was twisted here at where the peg is. And I was able to just kind of loosen it up and it was only, it was just upside down. So I just flipped it over. So it's actually easier going this way and it'll be easier in the middle of this. When I get to this last one, then it's going to be pretty tight and it's going to be hard to thread through there. So I hope I'm going this way when I get to that one. Um, because going, going from right to left on this one is easier than the, on that first one. Okay. We had enough in that 
last strand to get all the way to here. We only have two more to go, these last two. And I'm happy to report that this last one will be over under, um, which is the easier one to do. Uh, this is quite the exercise if you're OCD, and I am. And so you get to a point here where you start pushing these together and trying to make your squares the same. And uh, it already is looking pretty cool like those. That's not straight. <laughs> um, and you're gonna want you're gonna want them in pretty good order as far as you know being symmetrical and that sort of thing. When you start doing the diagonal stitch. It'll, it will start making a difference at that point because um, you want to make sure that your diagonals then create what look like little round holes in this. So I'm going to quit for tonight. I'm tired. And uh, we just have two more of these on, on this horizontal, and those are the, the last of the, the, I think it's the most difficult part of it. So, but looking really good and it's certainly tightened up and it will tighten up even more when we um, start doing the diagonals. What I had done is I had extra left over when I got done with the last horizontal here. So I went down through this hole, came up through this hole, and then I started going back and forth. And I'm going over the vertical, under the horizontal, over the vertical, under the horizontal. And you can see that it's already starting to make our desired little circles within the squares. When we have our diagonals coming back this way, which is the final step, it, those will look like little circles in the middle of there. Kind of cool. So, all right, I'm gonna try to keep this oriented. I'm going over the vertical, under the horizontal. Now, and I don't have much in this corner here left, so I didn't cut off a very long piece, maybe more than I need. Unless you have, um, the less difficult it is to wrangle it. So over the vertical, under the horizontal. Now I'm going to do about two here and then pull it tight because I want to make sure that I'm not twisted down here. And no matter how careful I am about keeping the facing oriented, it seems like every once in a while it just gets twisted. Okay, so that came out good. Okay, so we got done with the diagonals this way. And now we started on this corner down here and ran a diagonal, came up under this hole and there. So you can see we're starting to get our little circle deals in there. And when we do this before we were going over the vertical, under the horizontal, over the vertical, under the horizontal. That's exactly the opposite this time. And you can tell what you're doing because if you just look and see, 
which way the one that's perpendicular to it went, then you just know to go the other way. cut off a pretty long piece here so it's going to be a bit of a hassle for the first first three or four runs here what would they call that a course that's what they call it in roughing a course i don't know if that's what they call it in caning but i'd be okay with that Pull that through and make sure we're not screwed up. All right. Okay. Okay, so uh, under, over, we're gonna come under that little bit right there before we go down the hole. So we're on the last diagonal. This whole thing's now done. I got way too much line here. Well, we may be able to use some of that for the binding, so it's fine. Basically, the binding is just a run along the edge. Like that. And then we just take another piece and come up, down, up, down, up, down, cover over it. So, in this case, all my knots are tied, so it doesn't really do much for it other than just kind of make it pretty. That's how you do it. If you like the video, remember to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.